Good morning, guys. So today what we're going to start working with is we're going to start working with vertex edge graphs. And it's most likely something that you've never seen. You should understand at least the words behind the name, vertex edge graph. But again, it, it should be something that you guys have never seen. It may look odd to you at first, but it isn't difficult whatsoever. It's just getting to analyze what it represents. So what a vertex edge graph is, it's going to be a graph that consists of vertices and a bunch of edges, right? So again, you're going to have a bunch of vertices, right? Which again, you guys just analyze as a bunch of points, right? So that's the vertex edge, right? And again, this will make sense after a while. So you're going to have, let's say, a bunch of vertices, and then you also have a bunch of edges, right? Connecting them. And there is a reason why they are there. At the moment though, I'm just drawing them like this, just to start getting you guys in the habit of seeing what a vertex edge graph actually looks like. Again, vertex edge graph, just a bunch of vertices and a bunch of edges, right? And then those vertices will give them names too, just so you can actually identify them. So like we can call it vertex A right there. That one we can call D. This one we can call E. That one we can call M. That one we can call L. Okay, just making them up. And that's all a vertex edge graph is, guys. It's literally a combination of vertices. So vertices A, D, E, L, M. And then edges, right? The edges are the lines that actually connect, the segments that connect the vertices, right? So like if you're looking at the edges, we have edge A, E. We have edge A, D. We have D, E, E, L, and ML, right? And again, you can say ML, you can call it LM, you can call this ED, EL, or LE. The order doesn't matter, but it's just knowing what the edges and what the vertices in this case are, right? So again, for example, let's just analyze them. We know that the vertices here would end up being, vertices would end up just being A, right? It would be A, it would be D, it would be E, Right? It would be M, and it would be L. Those are our five vertices, and they're just the points that we're dealing with. And again, first we're just getting you guys comfortable with seeing what a vertex edge graph looks like, but there are uses for this in terms of being able to analyze like routes and things like that, paths, certain times points can like, for example, represent a home or a location, things like that. And then those always represent the paths. And we're gonna be going into that for the next couple of lessons. But today I just wanna get you guys comfortable with being able to see what they look like, right? And then in terms of vertices, again, we have, I'm sorry, in terms of edges, we do have five edges, right? And so the edges here would end up being, let's say, AE, right? Again, you can call it AE or EA. We can call it AD, right? We can call it ED, right there, right? We can call the edge EL. And then we can call the other edge LM. And again, the first thing I just wanted you guys to get comfortable with is seeing what are all the vertices, what are all the edges, right? But that is a vertex edge graph. It's just a bunch of vertices, a bunch of points, and then a bunch of edges connecting the points together, a bunch of segments, right? But first things first, I wanted you to get comfortable seeing that because there are certain things about vertex edge graphs that I do need you guys getting comfortable also with being able to analyze. And I promise it's not difficult at all. It's just getting used to looking at them. So again, I'll draw another one. And again, a lot of times they can look extremely unique, vertex edge graphs, right? So we'll have that right there. We'll have this, we'll have that. We'll do another one right here. And again, for now, I'm just getting comfortable with drawing this like this, just for you to actually be able to see it, right? Let's do another one like that, right? So we have that, let's say, right? It's another vertex edge graph, because again, it just consists of vertices and edges. We'll call this one B, right? We'll call that F, we'll call this K, we'll call this C, we'll call this M, and we'll call this N, right? So right there, again, you have another vertex edge graph with a bunch of vertices and a bunch of edges, right? 
So if I wanted to ask you the first thing, right? If I wanted to know the very first thing, which is what are all the vertices here, right? So again, it's not difficult to analyze. Vertices that we have are gonna end up being B, right? We have B, we have K, we have F, we have C, we have M, and we have N, right? So we literally know 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we have our six vertices right there. In analyzing the vertices, there's something else that we have, which is very simple to see. It's something called a degree of a vertex, of a vertex. And literally, what a degree of a vertex represents is how many edges are actually coming from that vertex, right? So again, I'll list all of them. So we have B again, right? We have B, we have K, we have F, we have those three, and then we have C, we have M, and we have N. And so again, all a degree of a vertex is, is how many edges are actually coming from that vertex. And I'll show you what I mean. So let's start with B, right? So we have B right there. The only edge that we have coming from there is just this one. So since B has only that edge touching it, coming from it, the degree of the vertex would be one. That's it. And it's just one just because if that's B, we have one vertex. We have one edge. That's it. So like going to the next one, we have K, right? We have K right there. K only has one edge. There's nothing else connected to it. So if K only has one edge, that degree would be one, right? We have F right now. So F is right here. And now F isn't just one, just because for F we have one edge, we have two edges, we have three. So if we have one, two, three, that degree would end up being three. And again, all in a degree of a vertex is, it's just how many edges are coming from that vertex, right? So in this case from F, F connects to B, F connects to K, F connects to C, that's our three. So looking at C now, right? If we have C right there, we see for C that the degree would be one, two, and three, because C connects to F, C connects to M, C connects to N, so that would also be three, right? And then M, if we look at M, we start here with M, we see that M connects to C, M connects to N, so since it has one and two, that would be two, right? And then the degree of N, we see that for N, it connects to M, connects to C, so it would just be one, two. And that's all a degree of a vertex is, guys. It sounds complicated again, but all it is, it's just how many edges are connecting from that vertex. So in this case, F was one, I'm sorry, F was one, two, three, B was 1, K was 1, C was 1, 2, 3, and then so on and so on, guys. It's just counting how many edges are coming from that vertex. And then there is something else, something that we call a degree of the graph, right? So we have the degree of the vertex, and then we have something called the degree of the graph. And that's even easier than all that, because in order to figure out the degree of the graph, it just means... Out of all of those degrees, which one is the greatest? So if we're looking at this, then the degree of the graph would be three. And the reason it's three is because the greatest one is three. Can't be one, can't be two, greatest one is three. If the biggest, if the biggest degree here was, let's say seven, the degree of the graph would be seven. All the degree of the graph is, it's just always the biggest number for the degree of a vertex. That's it, that's it. And so like if we analyze it always, just realize it. If you have C, C connects to F, M, and N. Over here, you know that K connects only to F. And again, those are our edges, guys. That's what's actually coming from each vertex connecting them, right? It's all it is. And then we have something else that I want to show you guys. Because there are two terms as well. But again, it doesn't get any more complicated than this, guys. We have two types of graphs. We have a graph that's called a directed graph, right? A directed graph. And then we have one that's called an undirected graph. Undirected. And it is extremely easy, guys, the difference between a directed graph and an undirected graph.
undirected graph. So the ones that you guys have been seeing right now, those are called undirected graphs, right? They're all a bunch of undirected graphs. And for the simple reason, I want to see if you guys can actually figure it out just by looking at it. So all of these right here, that would be an undirected graph, right? Something like this over here. This there, that would be an undirected graph, right? This one over here now, this is going to end up being a directed graph. Right? That right there, that's a directed graph. And the reason that it's called a directed graph now, and this is the biggest difference, a directed graph literally is a graph that shows you directions. It's literally telling you. So if you were looking here, it's telling you it's going this way, and it's going this way, and then it's going that way, and that way. That's why it's a directed graph. A directed graph literally gives you directions. It gives directions, right? It gives directions. So you know the way that one vertex is moving, right? You know that this vertex is going that way, right? You know that that edge is going that way, that edge is going that way. A directed graph gives direction. Whereas an undirected graph, there is no direction. It doesn't point where it's going, right? Gives no direction. Gives no direction. And that's the biggest difference, guys. And it does say it in the name, too. You get used to hearing it. A directed graph literally gives you directions, right? Whereas an undirected graph gives you no directions whatsoever. It doesn't tell you what way the edges are moving. Whereas a directed graph does tell you what direction the edges are moving. All right. Again, always hearing the word. If it's directed, it gives you direction. If it's undirected, it doesn't give you directions. And so again, let me just give you one more just so you guys can see it and just get comfortable actually analyzing it. But again, it's not complicated whatsoever, guys. If I were to give you, and I'll give you something smaller with this, right? Let's say I give you this, right? And without anything else, you already know what type of graph this is already. But that's not the point of it. And I'll show you what I mean. I'll give you that right there. And then let's say that right there. Right? And I'll do one more. Let's do that right there. Right? So again, it's still a vertex edge graph just because it has a bunch of vertices. It has a bunch of edges, right? Looks different now, but still the same thing. We'll call this E. We'll call this F. We'll call this H right there. We'll call this one I. And we'll call this one R, right? So again, the first thing that we know automatically, we know that this is a directed graph, right? We know it's a directed graph. And we know it's a directed graph because, again, it gives you directions, right? The second that you have the arrows telling you what direction you're going, it's automatically directed. It gives you a direction for every single vertex and every single edge, right? So we got a directed graph. First thing then, if we want to look at the degrees of each vertex, right? Degrees of each vertex of the vertices. Degree, degrees of the vertex. If we look at E, Sorry, degree of the vertex, poor English. Degree of the vertex, so let's start with E. We know that E is going to give us 1 and 2, right? And it's 2 because E connects to F, E connects to H, right? If we look at F, we know that the degree of F is going to end up being 1, and it's going to be 2, because even though it's not following directions, it's still connecting to, right? F is connecting to E. F is connecting to H, right? So we have those two right there. If we look at H, right? We know that the degree of H is going to end up being 1, 2, 3, 4, right? Because H is connected to E, H is connected to F, H is connected to R, H is connected to I. So we have 4 right there. If we look at I, we know that the degree of I is 1. Right? Equals 1. And we know that the degree of R is just 1, right? Again, just going back to H, 
I just wanted you guys to see for H that H is 4 because it connects to R, connects to F, connects to E, connects to I, connects to 1, 2, 3, 4. That's where we got 4. And if we see that, we know that the degree of the graph, degree of the graph, is going to end up being 4. And we know that it's 4 just because, again, the greatest degree was 4, so that's the degree of the whole graph. It's 4. Again, guys, hopefully you feel comfortable with this. We're going to keep working with it. Take care.